Thank you, Andre. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Ashok. I lead the planning and controls, uh, auto labeling, and simulation teams. Um, so, like Andre mentioned, the vision networks take dense video data and then compress it down into a 3D vector space. The role of the planner now is to consume this vector space and get the car to the destination while maximizing the safety, comfort, and the efficiency of the car. Even back in 2019, our planner was pretty capable driver. It was able to stay in the lanes, make lane changes as necessary, and take exits of the highway. But city seat driving is much more complicated. Um, rarely there are um, structured lane lines. Um, vehicles do much more free from driving uh, than the car has to respond to all of uh, cut-ins and crossing vehicles uh, and pedestrians doing funny things. What is the key problem in planning? Number one, the action space is very non-convex. And number two, it is high dimensional. What I mean by non-convex uh, is uh, there can be multiple possible solutions that can be independently good, but getting a globally consistent solution uh, is pretty tricky. So there can be pockets of local minima that the planning can st get stuck into. Uh, and secondly, uh, the high dimensionality comes because the car needs to plan for the next 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, and needs to produce the position, velocities, and acceleration uh, over the center window. This is a lot of parameters to produce at runtime. Discrete search methods uh, are really great at solving non-convex problems because they are discrete, they, can, they don't get stuck in local minima, whereas continuous function optimization can easily get stuck in local minima and produce poor solutions that are not great. On the other end, for high dimensional problems, uh, discrete search sucks because um, of the um, it, it is discrete, uh, it does not use any graded information, so it literally has to go and explore each point to know how good it is. Whereas continuous optimization uses gradient-based methods to very quickly go to a good solution. Our solution to this entire problem is to break it down hierarchically. First, use a code search method to crunch down the uh, uh, non-convexity and come up with a convex corridor, and then use continuous optimization techniques to make the final smooth trajectory. Let's see an example of how the search operates. Um, so here, uh, we're trying to do a lane change. Um, in this case, the car needs to do two back-to-back -back lane changes to make the left turn up ahead. For this, the car searches over uh, different maneuvers. Um, so in the, fir the, the first one it searches is a uh, lane change that's close by, but the uh, car breaks pretty harshly, so it's pretty uncomfortable. The next maneuver it tries, that's the lane change bit late, so it speeds up, goes in the other car, goes in front of the other cars, and finally does the lane change, but now it risks missing the left turn. We do thousands of such searches in a very short time span. Um, because these are all physics-based models, these futures are very easy to simulate, uh, and in the end, we have a set of candidates, and we finally choose one based on the optimality conditions of safety, comfort, and easily making the turn. So now the car has chosen this path, and you can see that as the car executes this trajectory, uh, it pretty much matches what we had planned. The cyan plot on the right side here, um, that one is the actual velocity of the car, and the white line be underneath it is, was the plan. So we are able to plan for 10 seconds here and able to match that uh, when we see in hindsight. So this is a well-made plan. When driving alongside other agents, it's important to not just plan for ourselves, but instead we have to plan for everyone jointly and optimize for the overall scene's traffic flow. In order to do this, what we do is we literally run the autopilot planner on every single relevant object in the scene. Here's an example of why that's necessary. Um, this is an auto corridor. I'll let you watch the video for a second. Yeah, that was autopilot driving in an auto corridor, going around parked cars, cones, and poles. Uh, here, this is 3D view of the same thing. Uh, the oncoming car arrives now. An autopilot slows down a little bit, but then realizes that we cannot yield to them because we don't have any space to our side. But the other car can yield to us instead. So instead of just blindly braking here, autopilot reasons about that car um, has low enough velocity that they can pull over and should yield to us because we cannot yield to them, and assertively makes progress. A second oncoming car arrives now. This vehicle has higher velocity, um, and like I said earlier, we literally run the autopilot planner for the other object. So in this case, we run the panel for them. That object's plan now goes around their, their side's parked cars 
and then after they pass the parked cars, goes back to the right side of the road for them. Since we don't know what's in the mind of the driver, we actually have multiple possible futures for this car. Here, one future is shown in red, the other one is shown in green. Um, the green one is a plan that yields to us. But since this object's velocity and acceleration are pretty high, we don't think that this person is going to yield to us, and they are actually going to go around these parked cars. So autopilot decides that, okay, I have space here, uh, this person is definitely going to come, so I'm going to pull over. So as autopilot is pulling over, we notice that that car has chosen to yield to us based on their yaw rate and their acceleration. And autopilot immediately changes its mind and continues to make progress. This is why we need to plan for everyone, because otherwise we wouldn't know that this person is going to go around the other parked cars uh, and come back to their side. If we didn't do this, autopilot would be too timid and would not be a practical self-driving car. So now we saw how the search and planning for other people set up a convex valley. Uh, finally, we do a continuous optimization to produce the final trajectory that the planner uh, needs to take. Uh, here, the gray uh, thing is the convex corridor, uh, and we initialize the spline in heading and acceleration, parameterized over the arc length of the plan. Um, and you can see that the optimization continuously makes fine-grained changes to reduce all of its costs. Some of the costs, for example, are distance from obstacles, um, traversal time, and uh, comfort. For comfort, you can see that the lateral acceleration plots on the right have nice trapezoidal shapes. Uh, it's going to come up, yeah, here on the right side, the green plot. Um, that's a nice trapezoidal shape, and if you record a human trajectory, this is pretty much how it would look like. Uh, the lateral jerk is also minimized. So in summary, we do a search for both us and everyone else in the scene. Uh, we set up a convex corridor and then optimize for a smooth path. Together, these can do some really neat things like um, shown above. But driving looks a bit different in other places, like where I grew up from.